Welcome to Public Forum, a community outreach program produced at North Idaho College on the shores of Lake Coeur d'Alene. Featuring guests from around the globe addressing a wide variety of subjects, Public Forum serves to educate and enlighten. Please join host and moderator political scientist Tony Stewart in welcoming today's guest. Welcome to our program. This is the great holidays uh, and we know you're home with your loved ones and we wish everyone a, a great holiday and we hope next year is going to be a wonderful year for you in the year 2005. Every year at this time we do something special for the holidays and we welcome back to the program a group that was with us the first week of December, our very good friends, the Singing Nuns from St. Michael's. Uh, we're going to have some wonderful music for you today uh, along with some interviews from our wonderful friends at St. Michael's. Again, welcome to our show. I'm very pleased to have Erna Reinhardt who is our panelist and she will start the program today by questioning two of our special guests. Welcome to the show, and I'm going to start the first question of today's program with Sister Mary Dominica. Start us out by telling our viewers um, a little bit about the Singing Nuns group and why it is you do what you do. Well, Singing Nuns started as a singing group um, back in 1979, and the reason we started singing in this way in public was to raise funds uh, for Mount St. Michael's, which we had just purchased at that time. But Singing Nuns quickly became much more than that. It's become a way, a way for us to reach out and share the joy of Christ and the love of Christ with other people. It's actually become quite a mission for us. Excellent. Sister Mary Eucharista, Hello. welcome to the show. How are you? Good, thank you. Since it's the holiday season, share with us how the nuns will celebrate Christmas at the nunnery. Well, as most of the world is probably celebrating Christmas at the beginning of December, we are observing the season of Advent where it's a season of rather quiet expectation and preparation for the birth of Christ. But once Christmas hits, oh my goodness, we have the 12 days of Christmas and we start off with Midnight Mass. Following that, we spend the day um, well, sort of recuperating from the Midnight Mass, but also we, we get uh, to visit a, a retirement home, usually in the afternoon. We have a beautiful evening uh, banquet together, usually with uh, visitors and priests and people who we invite. And following that, we have 12 days where, along with special prayers, we're also involved in um, having uh, opening the presents. We don't do open them on Christmas Day, but um, the, the, we just we have probably fewer presents than we get if we were out in the world. But they're they're more of a. It helps us to remind ourselves about the gifts of Christ. Thank we, you, Sister. I wish welcome. we could go on. We, time is so short on the program. It's so wonderful to hear from you. With this, we're going to invite the singing nuns to do Little Drummer Boy at this time.
Oh, I hope you all enjoy that as much as we do, and I'm sure you did. What beautiful voices of angels to sing for us, the little drummer boy. Uh, we have two more of the sisters to answer some of our questions about what they do, and we'll turn it over to Erna Reinhardt to question two of the sisters. Sister Frances Marie, welcome to the show. You guys are fantastic. Tell us about the boarding, the, the part at the school where the boarders live. You have a boarding school. Yes, we do, um, for high school girls. And this year we have girls from around the United States, one from Canada, one from Belgium, and one from Germany. So kind of a mixed knit group. And uh, it's our task to try to bring those girls together as a family each year. And they have lots of opportunity to practice charity to one another. Um, but what does knit us together, I think, is, is prayer. We go the, by the maxim that the family that prays together stays together. Um, we provide them with opportunities to um, um, <laughs> sorry, for opportunities to um, have an academic environment where they can study in the evenings. Um, they have a social atmosphere where we take them on week um, excursions and um, um, it's just it's a very nice um, yeah. opportunity to, to have uh, high school girls in a, in a setting with the sisters and uh, time for counseling if they need it from the priests and opportunities to work with the sisters um, if they need help with their schoolwork. So. Excellent. Sister Maria Alvila, you are one of the high school teachers. Tell us about some of the unique things that St. Michael's has in its curriculum. Well, most notable in our elementary level is a phonics program called Reading Express, which the sisters formulated themselves. And they use it not only for the students in the school, but they've been able to use it as an outreach for students with learning challenges. And then in the high school, we emphasize heavily Western civilization. We have art appreciation, two years of Latin, and a number of other classes that support that. Excellent. Uh, as I said last week, uh, two weeks ago, I've been there and I saw your students at work and it's very special. Uh, we want to get a lot of music in on this great holiday and, and thanks to you sisters, we're going to have you to now perform Once in Royal David City.
Well, again, those great, beautiful voices, and I know that you viewers are enjoying this uh, in your homes as you are uh, celebrating holidays. When we went up to St. Michael's with our staff, we have a wonderful staff, uh, and we did some taping there, and uh, Jeff Crow, who's our director, uh, was working on that along with uh, uh, Andy Finney, who's our executive producer, and one of the things that we uh, were able to tape there was the high school choir. They have a children's choir and they have a high school choir and uh, they teach them those same beautiful uh, numbers and, and great voices and so we decided to capture that since the high school students could not be with us today here at the studio and so at this time we're going to share with you our viewers a segment of the high school choir at St. Michael's. Again, just a wonderful part of our program to bring to you. And now we're going to turn back to the singing nuns, and they're going to do another wonderful number for us titled, O Bambino, Holy Night, at this time. Child was born. 
Well, again, another great number by the Singing Nuns from St. Michael's. I want to pause just for a moment to tell all of our viewers that this summer there'll be a concert at St. Michael's here in Spokane. It's going to be in the courtyard and it's on July the 9th and we hope all of you can come to that. Uh, again, we have two of the sisters to talk to and we're so pleased to have you here. First of all, Sister Mary uh, Bernadette, I forgot to ask what the time is for the concert. What time? Is it an evening concert? Or? There are actually two each day, Tony. One at 2, two o'clock and 7.30. Yes. Two o'clock matinee on the 14th and 15th. But that's, but we've already done that, and that's already passed the, on the, oh, we're talking so about the summer sorry. concert at the We're talking the about the summer now. concert. Yeah. We always start at 6.30. Okay, 6.30 mm -hmm. on July the 9th. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so the, sorry. the Met concert went beautifully, and so I know that you would like for people to come back and be up there this we summer. We start working on the Met right now, too. Okay, so. <laughs> you're, uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, Sister Mary uh, Bernadette, what are some of the rewards and and some of the great benefits have come out of the last 25 years for the singing nuns as they have performed. Well, one of the things I'd have to remember is the, the very special people we have met have touched us. You know, you, you say the sisters touch people's lives, and they also touch our lives. So we are enriched by the, the spirit that we see and the generosity of so many people, the selfless giving. Um, one of the other things I think is special about the singing nuns bringing to light is Spokane's heritage, maybe, maybe we don't all realize, but... There's a lot of uh, the works, the philanthropic works of, of especially hospitals and teaching was started by sisters and, mm -hmm. and uh, priests here in Spokane. So yes. there's, a, there's a lot of groundwork that I think Mount St. Michael is still a little, um, uh, capsulizes that. Oh, you and sure so singing, do. singing nuns yeah. um, also, we get a lot, just the Mount St. Michael's is a special place, you know, and I think that's a, a good thing. Uh, it's unique. Are there yeah. any other places like that in the country? Uh -huh. I don't know, but. Well, I see that radiance that you have, and that's what I'd ask this uh, mother, Mary Katrina, uh, the life of a nun, and what gives you, sister, such a radiance and, and happiness? I think it's because we're already getting the hundredfold, <laughs> the promise that, that all who leave father, mother, brother, sister, for mine's sake, will be given that hundredfold. And so we have a little bit of heaven right now. Right. Uh, you are really serving uh, people all the time in, in every walk of your life. Um, do you get a lot of reaction from people who come visit uh, at St. Michael's to, uh, as we did the other day, to observe your commitment and dedication? Yes, because it's, it's a very um, well-kept secret. People don't know that we're there. And when they come upon this, it's disbelief. I can't believe I'm actually seeing real nuns again. And, and they didn't know it still existed as it does. So. Yes. And Sister, or uh, Mother uh, Mary, uh, Katrina, uh, you, as we've been trying to do on this program, we've been talking about the life at, at uh, St. Michael. So, uh, and I'd also ask Sister Bernadette that uh, you, you do all these different things. You don't have a lot of uh, other help and assistance, do you? No, it's, and it is something, how many things a nun can do. I think we, we I didn't realize when I entered the convent that there would be other singers because I had sung with my, my right. siblings, my family, right. and I thought I gave that up. And I can remember the first time I harmonized with someone at the convent, and I got so excited. I thought, oh, we can sing here. You know, <laughs> This is going to be something. We, we were actually singing O Holy Night right. with an 81-year-old fellow sister. <laughs> that is, that's so wonderful. And in addition to your singing and, and your K-12 through teaching of schools, and uh, you, you prepare food, and uh, you have the, the print shop. And, Even maintenance of the and building. And maintenance of the building. You know? mm -hmm. Do you ever have any free time? Someday. Well, it's on the schedule. Whether it happens or <laughs> <Okay>. not is... <laughs> <laughs> I just got the signal that we have time for one more wonderful number. And at this time, we'll ask the singing nuns to do I Sing Noel.
With that, I want to thank the singing nuns. It's been great having you on these two programs. Thank you so much. You're wonderful. And ladies and gentlemen, please be with us again next week, and we'll turn to yet another issue. We hope you have a great 2005. Please be with us next week. I am Tony Stewart.